piece today. Um, I got this one at the um, Hospice Goodwill store. Paid four bucks for it. It's got a beautiful purple already on the inside sprayed. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that color. This one is going to be purple, black, and silver. Um, one of my favorite color combinations. So what we're going to do is we are going to clean this up with just some isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol. Before you um, put your, if you put a base coat, um, I always put base coats on mine. You don't have to, but I prefer them. Um, there's all kinds of fingerprints and water prints and all that kind of stuff on here. So once we get the labels off, um, we will clean this with denatured alcohol. I just have this denatured alcohol here and I use a paper towel. We're going to clean it off and then we're going to take it outside and we are actually going to spray it purple because I want to keep the purple on the inside. So we're going to spray this purple and then we are going to paint over it purple, black, and silver. So we're going to get this cleaned up and then take it outside and get it sprayed down. All right, we are back. Um, we ended up having to use the silver because I did not have any purple. My purple was almost out. That's all right, we were, able, we were able to use the silver and we still have a beautiful purple inside. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me see if I can focus on it. So that way we still have a beautiful purple inside. So the setup that we have here now is I have my Lazy Susan out. And these are just some extra um, ceramic, I'm not ceramic, but stone coasters that I can't use. So I'm going to use them as a base to kind of pull it off. I've got my little dish wipe container here, and we're just going to drop that on top of it. And also, so we can use as much runoff as uh, we can, and um, we don't waste any paint. I have a set of coasters here that have been spray painted with just, um, I guess this one's a glossy, just a glossy white spray paint. And we are gonna put them right here at the base so it can catch any runoff and we can see what kind of coasters we can get out of this. So we're gonna get that all set up. Okay. So that should give us something interesting. I have all of the colors mixed up. As always, I use my trusty little scale here. Link is down in the description. I get it for about eight bucks on Amazon. And our colors are the Deco Art Americana Lamp Ebony Black. Um, the pouring mixture, not counting this one, it's two ounces of pouring medium, one ounce of paint on all of these. Deco Art uh, decor metallics. This one is sterling silver. And then for our purple, it is the one or two ounces of pouring medium, half an ounce of the dioxine purple, the Americana, and then half an ounce of the media fluid acrylics dioxine purple. Y'all see that? It looks like it won't focus. There we go. So I don't know if the other ones are in focus. So we've got the dioxine purple. We've got uh, this one, which is the sterling silver, and then the Deco Art Americana Lamp Ebony Black. Just in case they weren't in focus, I wasn't sure. So that is those mixtures. And then I also have this one. This is what I call my flood color. This one's a three to one ratio. So it was three uh, ounces, or actually, well, two ounces of pouring medium and about one point, uh, no, sorry, 0.8 ounces of paint. This one's a little bit thinner than the other ones. And this one I'm going to use to do an initial coat. That way we can have a good solid um, base for the paint to flow on. Sometimes when you start pouring on, 
you're going to get it to where it'll get stuck all the way up here and won't drip down. And normally that's because you have little imp impurities on your paint or something like that. And this way, by doing a flood color and making sure everything is colored, everything should flow better. All right, I think that is everything. Uh, these got stuff on them. We are going to go ahead and get started.
Okay, that is all, that is done. Um, the coasters did not catch the paint as much as I wanted it to, but that's okay. We do have a little bit of runoff, but it's really not bad for doing a vase and a runoff type of, of pour. So I'm gonna bring y'all down and see if I can get y'all a closer look at these vases. And um, this up on the very bottom is just gorgeous. But I wanna get y'all down so you guys can see all the veining and all that kind of stuff that's in this. All right, so here is an up-close look at, um, this is the top, actually. I'm going to try not to make y'all sick. So this is the base where we poured everything. Then here's the vase itself. It's kind of hard to get a good look at because of the glare. Oh, there we go. We've got some beautiful lines and all that kind of stuff in there. And I can't turn the uh, Lazy Susan because the coasters are in the way. Speaking of, here are our coasters. All right, we're gonna go back to the vase. See if I can bring y'all around the other side. All right, everybody, we are back. Um, 
I was going to try and use the keep the plastic that is underneath that vase but it was almost impossible to move that plastic without tipping the vase over. So we are just going to use the excess paint. I'm not going to be able to use the runoff like I wanted to, but um, if I leave it on the paper long enough, I'll be able to use it as a skin. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just going to, to let it dry on that plastic and then I can use it as a skin for jewelry and that kind of stuff. So that paint will get used. It's not going to be wasted. It will get used. What I think I want to do is I want to use what is in this cup as a flip cup and then the paint that we do have left, um, I was going to try and use it as a tree ring pour and see what happens. So we are going to use this one as a flip, so we're going to flip that one on. This is the excess runoff. Uh, run or the excess well yeah I guess you can call it a runoff paint or a flow paint we're gonna pour that one around and oh this is a um, 11 by 14 level 2 artist loft canvas in case you're interested all right and we are gonna go ahead and pull this up and we are going to use this cup again for our tree ring pour. And let's see what happens. We are going to leave that one just like that. So in part two, uh, also after we do the vase, we will um, also seal this one and decide if we're going to put something on top of it. I think a, a Mandalay owl or something like that will be beautiful on top of this. So we will work on that when we come back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So everything is dried. I'm really excited about the way it all dried. Um, so the next step is we are going to get everything resin. So here is the vase that we have, and it'll be really good when we get the uh, resin going, be able to see all of this detail. And then of course the, the inside is still that beautiful purple color. And I have already gone over the rim just with my X-Acto knife, just really, really carefully and kind of scraped the excess paint off of the top of the rim. Um, I do mine at an angle so I don't go too far this direction and you just kind of scrape it off and give yourself a nice smooth surface. So here are our coasters. Get close so you can see these. So beautiful detail. They dried, they dried gorgeous. 
So we are going to get these all resined. And then we also have our painting, which dried very, very well. Um, again, has very good, nice defined lines. And I've actually decided that I am going to put a vinyl on this one, but it's going to be a hummingbird um, coming into a flower. So we're going to do the flower in the corner. And I think the way we were going to do it is the flower is actually going to be here with the hummingbird kind of up here is, oh, sorry. Um, the flowers can be down in this area and the hummingbird we're going to have up here in white. Um, that vinyl is cutting right now. So we are going to get started on resining the vase and the coasters. And then I'm going to give that stuff a little bit of time to, to tack up where I can move it. And then we're going to work on the, um, on the canvas. I did want to show y'all one of my other vases. This is this one was not videoed. I'm kind of upset I didn't video it, but it's very, very large. It was kind of awkward to paint, but this is the vase. This one does not have resin on it either. Um, it will be resined uh, with the other one. So I'll show you the finished product of this one as well. The inside, um, this was actually a chipped. I think I might have a photo of it. Um, I'll put it up if I do. But the inside was, was chipped and all that kind of stuff, so I did the inside a nice metallic gold color and then put some glitter spray on it. And this one's going to be resined on the inside and out. This one was a little tricky to pour. Um, I actually had to pour it upside down and then flip it right side up for it to dry and to be able to get the base and all of that. So if I find another vase like this one, I will do a video on how I poured it. It was a little trickier than most vases. So we're going to get everything cleaned up and I'm going to bring in the resin and show you how to use that. Be right back. All right, we have everything moved around. Um, I put down my plastic, put on my gloves, make sure you always wear gloves with resin. And we are going to do the coasters first and then we are going to do the vase. So I have my cups here and we are going to be using um, Envirotex resin uh, I don't think I have a box here and this came just in the jugs but it is Envirotex light resin it is a one-to-one -one ratio and that is by volume not by weight that is why I like to use these cups that have the lines on them because they're gonna to give you your correct ratios I always mix up more resin than I need especially when I'm doing a vase because you wanna make sure you have enough. Some things you can put a thin coat of resin on, but I have found out that with vases, um, so I don't know if you can see this. This was an experiment painting gone bad, but um, you see all these dimples and all this kind of stuff. This is one coat of resin just put on really thinly and letting it dry. And this, is a coat of resin where I, I do the thin coat, but then I also put a large, not a large amount, but a good amount of resin. So it's going to flow down and it's going to give you a good, thick, even coat. And so you're going to have a beautiful finish. So you can see them side by side, the difference in the finish when you use a good thick coat of resin versus a really, really thin coat of resin. All right. All right. Move those out of the way. Okay. A few things you want to make sure that you have when you're working with resin. Always, again, have your gloves. You can have a face mask if resin bothers you. And um, a blowtorch, which I need to go get mine out of the barn. Okay, got my blowtorch. I have my stir stick, gloves. I've got my uh, little face mask on. And we are going to go ahead and get this mixed up. Again, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. It is by volume, not by weight. 
and I always put the hardener, or sorry, I always put the resin, which is the white bottle for this set, um, the white lidded bottle, into the hardener, which was the black lid bottle. Making sure you scrape your sides, scrape the bottom of the cup, and get all of it out. Okay. And then we are going to get this mixed up. Now, if you resin something and it dries tacky, that means that you had too much resin and not enough hardener in there. And then sometimes if you have it mixed, if you have too much hardener and not enough resin, then it's going to dry uneven. It's not going to self-level and it might be cloudy. So it's very important that you have a good one-to-one -one ratio. If for some reason it does not cure correctly, just remix another batch and put it right on top. Resin is designed to chemically adhere to itself. So I'm going to do a good stirring up. We've got some bubbles, but we're going to take care of those with our, our um, torch. And then what I do, it's the, called the two cup method. I'm going to take this resin and now we are going to transfer it to this cup. One of the reasons that you do this is whenever you're mixing resin, sometimes you're going to get stuff that's stuck on the bottom and it's not going to mix and sometimes that's going to give you that uneven curing and so by doing the 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 cup to cup method two cup method you're making everything that was on the bottom of this cup now is on the top of this one and so that way you can make sure that you get a really good mixture in all right we're going to stir it up some more always making sure you're paying attention to your sides and the bottom of your cup when you're mixing it up All right, now it's nice and clear. I don't know if y'all can see this, but it's nice and clear coming off of the stir stick. There's no um, cloudiness or anything like that. So we are ready to go ahead and start coating everything. All right, like I said, we are gonna do the coasters first. So what I do with the coasters, I don't take them off on the back or anything. Any drips that I do have, I just sand off before I put the backing on. So what I'm gonna do is just do a little spot in each one. Because these are flat, you don't have to have a whole lot of resin. And again, resin is self-leveling. Okay, then what I do is I just spread it out. I spread from the outside. I run my fingers along all the edges and then run the sides. All right, now that those are done, we're gonna use our blow torch. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought I had a, here, I'll use this piece of plastic. There we go. Now I'm not, now I'm not getting resin all over my, my gun. And we're just gonna torch the top real quick just to get the bubbles off. Okay, now we've got the vase all set up. Well, I don't have it on the Lazy Susan because I don't want to get resin on the Lazy Susan. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bead around and then I'm, I'm going to pull all of this resin down the sides. So 
Same concept as before. This is kind of your base coat to give your resin something to move on. You can see how again it's it's beating up and only some pieces are actually dripping down. So we're gonna give it a hand. Sorry, guys. Okay. Now that we've got a nice coat of resin on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest, well, pretty much the rest of this resin, and we're just going to do a nice, thick, coat All right, I'm gonna let that work its way down a few minutes. All right, now it's almost fully dripped. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the heat gun. I always work from the top down. I'm just gonna hit it with the heat gun to get any bubbles out. See how that's actually gonna get more to move down and that's gonna give you your nice thin coat. I wanna make sure my top is nice and level as well. There we go. Okay, I'm going to let that continue to drip and I'm going to come back and check it on it um, probably in about 30 minutes to make sure that no bubbles have formed. And I'm also going to start working on the vinyl so we can get our canvas done. See y'all soon. Hi everybody, we are back. So this is actually the next day. Um, I had to let all that resin cure before I can move it. Um... The resin is still a little soft. Well, it's only been about 12, 14 hours, but uh, the AC is out in our house and I live in Texas where the heat index was 100 degrees yesterday. So you can imagine how fun it's been. We have some portable units set up throughout the house to try and help keep certain parts of the house cool for us and the dogs, but my office is not one of those places. So it's a little warm in here. Um, I'm actually gonna have to take um, all the stuff that I resined out to the studio, uh, where it's a lot cooler because it has its own AC unit to uh, get everything to cure. But we're going to go ahead and get this part done. I did want to show you, so this is the vase. Again, like I said, it's still a little bit soft, but this is what the vase looks like. It's cured enough that I can touch it. And so I'm going to show you how I remove all these bubbles. And as you can see, I've already done it on some of it. So, I don't know what that is on the inside. I have to get that off. Okay, so what I do, see if I can bring y'all down closer. Um, all right, I'm sorry if that's a little fuzzy. I'm trying to get down as close as I can for y'all. It's not wanting to focus, but um, so you can see all of this and where all these bumps are. I just take my X-Acto knife and I just slowly 
push it along the base of it. I make sure the blade is flat onto the glass. I wish that would focus for y'all, but it is not wanting to. Okay. And then I just slowly walk it back. And then once I do that, I'll take some light sandpaper and I will do sandpaper around it. And this is actually a pretty dull blade. It's not really, really sharp. So I'm not gonna be digging into the glass or anything. But just keep it nice and flat and I just walk around the vase. And that's it. And then what I'll do is I'll actually have, I have my reciprocating sander and um, I will just go with a probably a 320 grit. I'll go around the edge and smooth all that out. And so it'll be a nice clean top, just like that. But this actually gives you a better up close look at the vase. And that's the bottom. Okay. So I've taken this outside and I did my first uh, couple of passes of the Krylon spray lacquer just to seal it in. And now we are going to put a coat of the Min Wax polycrylic on it to give us a good base to put our vinyl. Uh, we are using a two and a half inch oval soft bristle brush that we are going to use to brush on our first coat of polycrylic. All right, that is the first coat of polyacrylic. We are gonna let this dry for about an hour or so. And then uh, we will be back to put our vinyl on. But I did wanna show y'all the coasters. So the coasters are completely dry. So I can zoom into those for you. So here are the coasters. And so I do have, so this one's actually pretty good. I do have one that has a drip on it um, right there. But again, I will just use my sander and I will just sand those down before I put the backings on them. There's this one. So a nice, good coat of resin. Cured very well. This one I'm actually gonna have to put another coat on. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that, but we had a gnat get in there that I had to I had to hit it with the heat and kind of soften it and pull them out so I'm gonna need one more coat of resin on this one to uh, fill in that hole all right and then since I showed y'all this one last time this is that large vase so it is now completely resined thing is really heavy it has a really good coat of resin on it we'll pull into the detail and again if I find another one of these vases I will show you how I was able to pour on it um, the process that I used hey Kiba All right, we are going to let that painting or the polycrylic dry, and then we will be back to put our uh, hummingbird and flower on our painting. See y'all soon. Hi, everybody. We are all back. Um, it is actually now in the evening. Um, I went ahead and let this dry while I was at work, and now it's, I know it's completely cured, and we are going to go ahead and put our vinyls on. So this is our flower. 
And this is our hummingbird that we're going to put on here. These are called Zen Tangles. Um, it took me probably about 20 minutes just to weed this hummingbird because of all the detail in it. So they take a little bit of time. All right. Um, I do cut and make all my own vinyls. Um, I do have vinyls, over hundreds of them, available on my website at guidedbyfaithdesigns.net. I don't know if I'm going to offer Zen Tangles yet. Um, I have quite a few of them that would look really good. They, they might be a little more expensive than your regular vinyl just because of all of the detail work. But um, I'll probably post some on the website. And um, they will only come in limited sizes. And again, they, they might be a little bit more expensive than regular vinyls. But we'll see what we can do. We are going to go ahead and get this placed. I don't want to use a huge piece. Yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, we should be able to fit that one on there pretty good. So what we're going to do, this is actually a uh, transfer paper. If you are doing vinyls, the uh, link is down in the description for the transfer paper that I use. Um, when you do purchase vinyls from me, I do all of the cutting and the weeding and I put the, them on this paper for you so they will actually come already ready to apply. Alright, so we're just going to do that right there. And I know I brought it in here. There it is. sure that we stay so this is gonna go right here Now, not all vinyls come off that easily. One of the reasons it does come off so easily is because I had that base layer of the polycrylic. If you do not have anything on your canvas at all, the vinyl is going to be extremely hard to, um, to get on the canvas because canvases technically are really kind of porous, is, for lack of a better word. Um, it's just really hard for the vinyl to grab a hold of just a canvas with paint on it. And so having down a base layer, I use, of course, polycrylic. Um, I have not tried it with anything else, uh, applying vinyls with any other type of uh, base layer other than the spray lacquer. So if you have a hard time putting your vinyls on your paintings, it might be because you don't have a good base layer for the adhesive to stick to. All right, let's get our hummingbird on. Now, when you're putting your vinyl down, just be very, very careful because once this vinyl touches that canvas, that's where it's going to stay. So when you're putting your, your vinyl on, just be very careful about your placement. Because once, like I said, once you get it on there, it's, it's not going anywhere.
All right. Whenever you are using um, the transfer paper, always keep the yellow piece um, because you can use it again. So I just stick it back on its backing and I will use these again to do other transfers so you can reuse your transfer paper. Okay, now that we have this on here, we're gonna flip the canvas over and we are gonna hit the back of the canvas. And make sure we have a good um, seal on this, can on this vinyl. All right, now that that's on there, we are gonna get everything set up and we are gonna put our final coat of polycrylic. Be right back. All right, we are all back. I got my plastic down. I've got my two and a half inch soft bristle brush ready to go. Same one that we used earlier. And our Minwax polycrylic. It is extremely important that if you put a vinyl on your painting that you seal this vinyl on somehow. Whether you just do a spray coat of Krylon spray lacquer, which I would not advise on top of polycrylic, it will blush. Um, you can use Krylon spray lacquer below polycrylic, but once you put polycrylic on there, I would not use Krylon spray lacquer, it will blush it. Um, so if you just did a Krylon spray lacquer base and not a poly base, then yes, you can use the Krylon spray lacquer to, to cover your vinyl and seal it. Um, we are, of course, going to use the polycrylic just to seal it on. Um, you can also use resin to seal on. And I don't think I have one here in the office. I think they're all outside in the studio. Um, you can use resin on top of polycrylic and it'd be fine. You can use resin on top of pretty much everything I've ever used. So lacquer, spray lacquer, polycrylic. Um, those are really the only bases I've used, but you can use resin on top of polycrylic. Um, however, if you put resin right on top of your vinyls without sealing all the edges, there is an opportunity for the resin to leak under the vinyl and lift the vinyl up. So my recommendation is always seal your vinyl with something before using the resin. Let me know if you have any questions about that. Let me know in the comments um, and I will let you know if um, I can answer them or not. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our, our polycrylic on. Same technique as last time. Nice thin coat, pull the edges, work the sides, and then long smooth strokes to smooth it out. looking for my foam brush, but I think I accidentally, oh, no, there it is. So we're gonna take our foam brush and we are gonna make sure that the sides are smooth. And then of course underneath to get any drips smoothed out. And that's it. I will probably put one more of polycrylic on top of this one. But I think we are going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I know it's been a long one. We've done a lot of stuff. We've done a painting. We've done a vase. We've done coasters. 
I'm going to get everything together, get some photos, post the photos at the end, as well as some up-close shots that I got as everything was drawing. Thank you very much for watching. Um, one more piece of advice when it comes to working with vinyls. If you have never worked with vinyls before, always do some sample pieces before you put any type of chemical on top of them. So, I have no problems with polycrylic or the Sprylon, Krylon Spray Lacquer or... Um, the resin but i always recommend a sample do a sample piece on top of your vinyl because sometimes certain things will make your vinyl um shrink and crack and um and it will ruin it so if you go to my website guidedbyfaithdesigns.net and you order one of my vinyls Leave me a little comment if, if you've never used them before and ask me to send you a couple of test pieces and I'll send you a few strips, extra strips of vinyl. Um, that way you can test whatever chemical you're going to put on top of them and so that way you're not ruining anything. All right. So again, thank you very much for watching. Down in the description, paint colors used as well as links to my Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as my website guidedbyfaithdesigns.net. There's also a link down there if you'd like to help sponsor my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned at the end of the video for the up-close macro shots of the paintings and the pictures of all of the finished products. I hope everybody had a wonderful and blessed day. We covered a lot today, and I hope I hope you're able to, to take these and, and use it to make your own beautiful creations. And as always, God bless.